Welcome to poll worker training on how to serve diverse voters. As a poll worker, your service to Utah citizens is vital. Voters come to the polls with varied opinions, backgrounds, and interests. Our election system serves all of them. Each has the right to vote privately and independently. To help you prepare to serve voters who may need accommodation, we've invited some Utah voters to share some advice. What poll workers can do to help a blind person navigate into the polling area is first acknowledge that they're there by the front door, offer their assistance in the form of offering an elbow or walking next to the person. If they want to introduce themselves or I may introduce myself to them so that they know who they're working with and then usually what I tell them is if they want to give me turn by turn directions but honestly Moreover, I prefer just a little basic conversation, even just, oh, how's your day going? Because I can hear their voice and follow them from there. When in doubt, just ask. So having the poll worker be aware of the situation and asking what is the best way to assist the blind. If someone were to reach for my cane, I would sort of feel disoriented because I'm trying to use it to navigate around obstacles like the table or to find the little section where the voting machine is. When interacting with a service animal team, particularly a guide dog team, first and foremost, address the person that the dog is accompanied with. Don't don't interact with, with the guide dog. And the reason being is because the guide dog, just like the pull worker, has a job that they have to do. And if they become distracted, they can't perform their job to, to the fullest. If they just say something simple, like remind me that the little cutoff corner of the ballot goes up to the top on the right, then from there, I'm pretty good now that I know how to use the machine. If they don't know how to use the machine, just be willing to answer the individual's questions. Using jargon that matches what's braille labeled on the machine is really important to us. So being consistent with the verbiage. I think the first and most important thing is to have patience when you're talking with a deaf person. Um, not because that person is different, but just trying to set up a communication standard. Once that's set up, then you'll know what way they want to communicate. Some prefer writing back and forth. Some will just gesture back and forth. Some will even use their phone and type out a message on the screen. There are a lot of different ways to do visual communication, and that's the most important part. It's also important that if the person is using a sign language interpreter, to always look at the deaf person. For example, right now I have an interpreter voicing for me while I'm signing, but the camera is pointed at me because I'm the one doing the communication. So it's important to make eye contact with the deaf person and the person who's conveying the information. We as older voters like different levels of help. Just ask us what we need. It's a good idea to set up some chairs so a voter like me can sit while we wait. The best thing a poll worker can do is ask me what help I might need, but don't do, don't assume that I that I need help, and don't do something for me. And the kind of help I'm somebody like me might need is assistance in getting an ID out, or uh, or signing or signing the voting book, or tilting the tilting the screen or positioning the machine so that so that I can reach it. Anyone has the right to have a person of their choice assist them with voting. When I vote, I would like my brother to go with me. Mindy can choose anyone to help her, as long as it's not her boss, her union representative, or a candidate. She can even ask for help from a poll worker. Please talk to me, not my helper, I'm the voter. Uh, the person providing assistance may not advocate for the voter to vote for or against any issue or candidate on the ballot. The person providing assistance should also keep the voter's choices private. My experience with being a voter that uses a wheelchair, there are two main things that I really want to hit home. One, if I need assistance, I'll ask for it. Please don't touch me or my chair. Two, I just need enough space to be able to get behind the ballot marking device. Make sure that the table is far enough away from a wall that I can maneuver safely, but also still private. There are lots of different wheelchair types. I use a small and compact one that fits into many spaces. Other chairs will be bigger and require more space. 
A good rule of thumb is about five feet of area that you want clear so that they can maneuver easily to the ballot marking device. Assisting voters with a variety of needs is simple. Be respectful and ask how you can help. That way, each voter can let you know what works best for them. Thank you for serving the needs of all of our voters.